الحمد لله وصلاة وسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعده أهبت في الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إمام إبن رجب رحمه الله تعالى he mentioned about علي بن أبي طالب رضي الله تعالى عنه that he divided people into three types of the carriers of knowledge or uh, the the carriers of knowledge of three types. He said, the first category, they consist of the one who has no evidences from the carriers of knowledge. Doubt has pierced his heart when it was first presented to him. He grasped it and thus fell into mass confusion and uncertainty. From that he came out producing such acts as innovations and misguided affairs. So the first one is a person who has doubt in their heart. They're a person of ignorance. And they, as the ulama uh, used to say, yashrab al-hawa, that they drink and, 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 and immerse themselves in their desires. Then he says the second category. The second category are the people of desires. There are portions of two types. The first consists of he who seeks after the worldly life under the pretense of desiring knowledge, subhanAllah. So he makes knowledge a means of attaining worldly goals. The second portion consists of the one who is overcome with the desire of amassing worldly gains, its riches and its treasures. None of these types of people are from amongst the shepherds of the religion. Rather, their similitude is only like that of cattle. For this reason, Allah the Most High has compared those who are entrusted with the Torah and that failed that trust to donkeys carrying books. And he has compared the learner of evil, the one who detaches himself from the verses of Allah, clinging onto this world and following his lust with the likeness of a dog. And the donkey and the dog are the lowest forms of animals and the worst of examples. The third category of the carriers of knowledge, they are the possessors of knowledge. They uphold it, protect it, and establish it upon the evidences and clear proofs of a law. It has already been stated that they are the fewest of people, yet greatest in stature in the sight of a law. They're the greatest in stature in the sight of a law. This is an indication towards their few numbers and towards the strangeness of the carriers of knowledge from this category. Likewise, Al-Hasan al-Basri rahimahullah ta'ala has divided the carriers of the Quran into a similar division as that of Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, his division of the bearers of knowledge. It shows us how the Salaf used to view the people and how even in their time that they saw people who gained something of knowledge and didn't practice it. And they saw people who gained knowledge for worldly gain, for fame and stature. And they saw people who gained knowledge to please Allah Jal and to be a source of light and guidance for the people. And they saw people who were ignorant and remained in ignorance. And because of that, they had no strong foundation in the religion. And they're able to be ping-ponged from minhaj to minhaj, from methodology to methodology, from ideology to ideology from theory to theory, from hypothesis to hypothesis, from paradigm to paradigm, their whole worldview will change overnight. And this shows the danger of extreme ignorance. And this is why I encourage myself first and foremost and my brothers and sisters to seek knowledge and purify your intention for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and go on that mighty journey if you can if you can embark on it in some form or fashion, because it really is nur. It really is guidance. And you don't want to fit into those categories of being played with, with regards to your religion. You want to see when a person of bid'ah and desires comes up with a new claim, you want to be able to see right through it and place it on the scale in mizan of ilm. And you want to be able to place it on the scale in mizan of Hujjah wal Bayan. And that comes from the book and the Sunnah. That comes from Kitabi Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
in the madhab of the salaf of this ummah. And we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses us to be on the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and blesses us to be from the firqa to najiyah. Because our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa did indicate that there would be one, which is considered the firqa to najiyah. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Kullaha fin nar al wahida. He said all of them are in the fire except one. He was talking about all the groups and sects. And the, and these are from Islam even. Meaning that they're in the fold of Islam. These aren't the ones who are outside the fold of Islam, because then they're not even in the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But he's talking about those who are actually Muslim. But yet they've become misguided following groups, sects, ideologies, new minahij. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be of those whom he's pleased with and forgive us of our sins. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.